I had a very firm grasp on um, all three books from the very beginning. I was actually on vacation in New Mexico with my family, um, and we were road tripping it back, and I had my laptop, and I had been working on copy edits for another book, and this idea just hit me. And it was one of those that just sunk its teeth into me and wouldn't let go, and I spent the next hour making copious notes you know, writing down thoughts as fast as they were occurring. And when I got back home, I called my agent and I said, I've got this really, I, you know, I've got this idea I'm really excited about and I want to know what you think about it. And I told her about it. She loved it. She called my editor that same day and she loved it. And, you know, the rest is history. But yes, I had a very firm idea of what I wanted to do with each of the books and it doesn't always happen that way for me but in this case absolutely yes I had a very clear vision of each story in fact you know I knew what Ash's story would be before I even started on Rush the first book. You know I really can't answer a whole lot to that because I haven't read a lot of the kinky billionaire stories out there um, I'm basically, I'm not doing anything different than I've done for the past seven years. Um, you know, I've been writing erotic romance stories just like the Breathless Trilogy since 2006. Um, I've written for Harlequin Desire, which is a very similar, uh, but slightly less eroticized uh, version of these super wealthy, kinky billionaire stories. I mean, Harlequin Desires are all about wealthy, possessive, dominant heroes. They just aren't as sexually explicit. So I wrote those for several years. Um, my sweet series with Berkeley is, you know, BDSM erotic romance, you know, that started publishing in 2006. So I haven't let the hype change the way I write or what I write because I tell my readers at the end of the day they're going to get a Maya Banks book. They're going to get what they have grown to expect from me in every single book that I write. I can only write the way I write and the stories that come to me. I can't make myself write something different just because I think it will please a certain segment of my readership. You know, I think with Gabe, um, I was always a little amused by how Mia just kind of knocked him off his feet. Um, I think he was always a little unsettled by her and that, that kind of secretly amused me. So it was a lot of fun to watch her kind of, you know, rock him back on his heels and set him back a little bit. Um, in Fever, I absolutely loved Jace's intensity. I loved that when he discovered you know, Bethany's circumstances that it, he didn't walk away, he didn't wash his hands of her, he didn't think, oh, I'm too good for her. His first instinct was to find her, protect her, provide for her, and make certain that she no longer lived that life. And, um, you know, my favorite thing about Ash in Burn was the fact that he was so persistent. He saw Josie, recognized the significance of the collar that she was wearing, knew that he was trespassing on another man's territory, but he didn't care because he saw something he wanted. And I loved the way he went about it. He was possessive, yes, but he was also very tender and very cherishing of her. And I, I love seeing that softer side to a dominant alpha you know, male when it comes to the woman he loves. You know, for Ash, I always knew that I wanted somebody who was not like him. I, I wanted somebody who was very free-spirited, very independent, very marches to the beat of her own drum. I knew that from day one. And as soon as I realized that's what I wanted, Josie came to me, you know, with her tattoo and her being an artist and her being self-sufficient and maybe she didn't have all the money in the world, but she was happy and she was content in her life. She wasn't somebody who was miserably unhappy. She wasn't looking for somebody to save her from her circumstances. Um, she, she had her act together. And, and I love that because I thought that's what Ash needed. 
you know, to kind of balance him because he had so many other people in his life who unbalanced him that I thought Josie was, was perfect for him. I, he was, she was what he needed most. I, I can't say verbatim, but I can give you the, um, the conversation in which it occurred. Um, when Ash and Josie are at dinner together for the first time, um, Ash explains to her, you know, what submitting to him will mean. And he tells her that, you know, he understands that she's offering him her submission, but it doesn't mean that she's less. Um, he tells her that, you know, she's the most important thing, the, the most important aspect, and that she's never less, that not only is she more, but she's everything in the equation, and that her gift could never possibly equal anything that he could give back to her in return, that the gift of her trust and the gift of herself is more precious than anything he could provide for her financially. Definitely the breakup scene when Josie goes to Ash's off office to confront him after she discovers the truth about who was buying her paintings. Um, you know, she completely pulled the rug out from underneath Ash. He deserved it. Um, I understood Josie's reasons for being angry and feeling betrayed, um, but I also hurt for Ash because I knew his intentions were good. I knew what his motivation was. Um, you know, as the author, I can see both sides of the coin. So that was a really hard, emotionally raw scene to write because Ash basically had to watch her walk away, you know, and walk out of his life not knowing if he would ever get her back again.